Hey guys, and welcome back to the Try Hard Workshop. This week, we're flying through the cosmic winds to alien battlefields and distant worlds, turning our attention and Q's skills to sci-fi terrain. Join us in the void with part one of our three-part series, Concrete and Rust, the absolute essential science fiction terrain guide. Now, as a setting, alien planets, weird dimensions, and mechanized trenches offer nearly infinite potential, and we have huge plans to construct some titanic battlefields. If you've seen our mega dungeon build, you'll really get the idea of what we're going for, and we're going to take that same energy into the future. Now to kick that process off, we need to figure out what our building blocks are and get crafting. Just before we get stuck in, if you're returned, you're welcome back. It's lovely to see you. Sit down, have a nice cup of tea, put your feet up. I really hope you're going to enjoy this video. I think it's a pretty good video myself and we hope to exceed your expectations. If this is your first time and you like what you see, give us a sub or a like, whatever. Go on. It'll be a bit of crack. Anyway, let's get stuck in. We'll begin with constructing concrete walls, because the basic construction plus concrete finish can be iterated all the way up to a fortress size. The Imperial Palace itself, if you have enough cardboard. Get a long strip of cardboard. Using it as a bed has the added advantage of giving the tops of your walls a rounded effect, as you would see on some poured concrete walls. It's also cheap and you should have a pile of it sitting in the house that you don't have a clue what to do with. So save it from the recycling and use it in this build. For rough dimensions, you'll have to decide how big your wall is. If you want a small wall of 2.5 inches, your car's height should be about 5 inches. Essentially double the size of your wall, as we'll be folding the card in half. Q is making larger walls for his complex, so this card is closer to 12 inches in total, folding to a 6 inch wall. If you have an excess lip, just cut everything down to size. Battlefield wear and tear can cover a lot, but you'll generally want to be quite precise in these constructions, as sci-fi has more defined shapes than fantasy. Now, Q's making a corner piece here, so he marks it down to the middle to bend with a ruler, creating a nice right angle. Once everything's folded into place, unfold and put a solid layer of hot glue along each inner surface and fold back into place. Hold it for a moment as the glue dries. There's a little work time here, so if you want to reposition an element, now's the time. We're basing our walls in hardboard, also known as HDF or particle board, which is the go-to option for most of our builds nowadays. These bases are an inch and a quarter across, the size of a steel ruler. Q here is going to sand off the edges of the hardboard. When you step back from the board, things being rounded gives each terrain element flow and is just another technique that Q is going to use to help the scene rise from the terrain itself. Glue the walls to their base. Each element has a good surface, so making a solid connection shouldn't really be an issue. Just keep in mind, if you're using a glue gun, you'll have to continually reposition or hold the piece in place whilst the glue dries. Once the walls are in their desired position and the initial layer of glue is dry, go back in with the glue gun and reinforce all those connections. If you run a bump of glue along the base connection, when you add gravel later, it'll look like it's piled against the wall and is a really good enhancement technique to add realism to your board. Just a side note on recycling, if you notice the white paint on the bottom most wall, it was the scrap that Q used to clean off his brush whilst dry brushing the Causeway Caverns Mega Dungeon. So don't let anything go to waste. 
back to the build. What might shock you is that this terrain build actually isn't painted. The concrete finish has just three elements, PVA glue, tissue paper and tiling grout. The first step to a concrete finish though is mixing some dirty paint water with your PVA glue. If you don't have any dirty paint water yet, what are you doing? Get crafting, get painting. But for now, choose a pot of paint and designate that as your dirt water. Most of our builds include some dirty paint water so it'll be really useful to have going forward. Using the mixture, paper mache the entire concrete section of the walls. And now for the magic touch. Whilst the tissue paper is still wet with PVA glue, get tiling grout and liberally spoon it over the sections that you want to have the finish. When you're happy with the grout layer, spray it with water. This helps the PVA, tissue paper and grout really integrate together. Now give the whole thing a wash with dirty water to bring the saturation of colour and tone together. Coat various sections with dirty paint water, giving it a mottled patchy look. Give it a little more grout if it's needed and then one last spray to lock everything into place. And it's done. No paint to 
and the perfect iterative base for miles upon miles of fortress walls or trenches. The perfect base for all the sci-fi madness we have in store. And that's us for this week. Next time, we're going to be delving into the entropic world of Rust. And we can't wait to see what you guys do with all this knowledge. So get out there, get building, send us pictures. We love to see it. And until next time, try hard. In, could you do me a favor?